So, hello everybody, how are you all? Everybody well seated? So, I have a question to ask. What comes to your mind when I say the word coffee? C7, spark it up, blacksmith? Oh, yes. So, today you are getting an opportunity to meet the man himself who curated these beautiful amalgamations of caffeine, which we cannot stop swooning and sipping over. Today, we have with us Mr. Mithilesh Vazalwar, who brews the minds of Nagpurians. Good afternoon, one and all present here. I, Prachi Tarwani, Secretary of Simbi Top Club, welcome you all to this session on the topic, Passion to Paycheck, an Indian coffee story by Mr. Mithilesh Vazalwar, CEO and founder of Corridor 7 Coffee Roasters. He is popularly known for amplifying the coffee culture of Nagpur, whose creativity is sparked by roasting coffee beans into perfection. Mithilesh Vazalwar is a coffee cube grader, coffee roaster, cupper, and trainer. Coffee has always been his passion. He is the first Indian Aeropress champion in 2017 and the first to represent India at the World Aeropress Championship and also Indian Barista Champion 2022. Despite offers in India and Australia, his heart was to start small, but quality with Indian coffee. Having spoken at TEDx, he was also a keynote speaker at the Indian International Coffee Festival with just three years into the coffee industry. So coffee at Corridor 7 Coffee Roasters endeavors to empower Indian coffee farmers with a no middleman and no negotiation approach sourcing directly from them. So I now request Richa Ma'am and Subhajit sir to felicitate Mr. Mithilesh Vazirwar with a token of appreciation. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, ma'am. Now, let's put an end to the week. For getting inspired and motivated, let us put our hands together to welcome Mr. Mithilesh Vazilwar sir to the dais. Am I audible? 
Uh, okay. 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 So, uh, <clears throat> there's no much talk that I've prepared to be very, very honest. I just want to be very open about what I've done, what Corridor does, where we are heading, and what is all this exactly about. Why a person who's brewing coffee has been invited to a talk at such a prestigious, prestigious college. Right? So, uh, thank you for the introduction, by the way, uh, and thank you for having me over here. Uh, in short, what I do is everything about coffee, all right? So coffee as an industry is growing massively. I got into coffee back in 2015, all right? So first, let me talk to you about what I exactly do, where I come from, how did I got into co get into coffee. I hope it inspires a few people. I know somebody sitting over there in the first row over there. He was a part of Corridor for a very long time, really hard working. Please give him more marks for sure. So yeah. Uh, so basically, uh, I come from a family where my dad is a chartered accountant and an entrepreneur uh, himself. My mom was a housewife uh, and for 45 years, she was kind of a housewife and then she got into a business called Tupperware. I'm sure everybody must have been scolded for not getting a Tupperware box at home, right? Somebody must have lost a Tupperware box or has a call I have a mom's head. So my mom was a distributor of Tupperware, is a distributor of Tupperware. And she started at the age of 45, and she's a distributor of Vidar today. With that company, she traveled to over like 22, 23 countries. So uh, having said that, the reason I'm telling you this is because I, the business side of things came very naturally to me. It was not something that I uh, kind of found difficult because also additionally, I used to play badminton professionally. So at a point of time, my highest ranking was number two in the country. And I used to travel, I was just talking to the faculty of the college and I used to travel for around 200 to 250 days a year. So which means no school. Uh, I used to be in school for like probably 100 days a year, uh, but I still got passed. So I don't know, I question the education, I don't know. But uh, what badminton taught me was uh, uh, how to be really flexible. And uh, right now, Rishamam gave me the, uh, plant all right and she said like please keep it on your desk and i said that i don't have a desk all right because i don't have a particular office i don't have a particular desk what i'm trying to say is when you get into the entrepreneur quote unquote entrepreneur life you got to be super flexible about things you cannot say that okay i'm gonna work from eight to six you cannot really say i'm gonna work from nine to five you're working 24 7 365 days a year for throughout but the biggest thing that i want today for you guys to take away is it's not about the paycheck it is about the passion all right passion is overrated at times i'll get that back to that if i don't get back to that please remind me from uh, somebody please remind me but passion will do half of your job all right so badminton was my first passion but back in 2014 uh, okay not an emotional story i don't want to have those who's and us it's a very practical thing in 2014, I basically tore my left ankle while playing a final match. Uh, not tore, I broke my left ankle. I tore my calf muscle. And also in the same year, I underwent a surgery for my back, which was basically kind of, could have been very close to cancer. So for one week, the doctors, the doctors were not really sure about exactly what this tissue is about. So 2014 was tough. Uh, oh, I forgot about my favorite thing in life. I was also pursuing CA. Right, uh, CA for everybody. Anybody who's tried for a CA thing, one person. Anybody over here? Okay, how do you feel after quitting it? <laughs> so CA was something that I did out of just no thought. To be honest, there was no heart. My dad is a CA, so I thought that I'll also pursue CA, but I never enjoyed that. I never got up in the morning saying that, wow, I'm going to tally a balance sheet, all right? Today, I get up in the morning saying I'm going to have some coffee. 
So CA was a big part of my life from 2007 to 2014. I was pursuing or I was trying to do something that I was not supposed to. Uh, I had my own firm also and I had just one group of my CA final left. But all these things happened. And then in 2014, I realized one thing that I'm not really doing what I love. So I had this small office room. Uh, I mean, I don't know why I had an office that time. Abhi nahi hai tab kyu tha. But uh, I had this small space behind the row screen area. Uh, behind the standing room, uh, STR or C7 as it is called of Dharambit. There's a place Pichemet, where my office was there. And I had this huge, huge white board, all right? And in that, on that, I had basically scribbled down everything that I want to do in life, all right? I was like, I'll do everything, I'll do all those things, you know, like if you want to write down, what would you write? Scuba diving, snorkeling, uh, I want to go to the Himalayan and all those, I don't know what or whatever. I think 47th or 48th to do was coffee, do something in coffee. I remember that I had to do something in coffee. So that was written and 2015 started and to then after 2015, I don't know, so after 2015 started, what happened was uh, my in May my examination was there, CA cup, and I just gave, and I knew that I'm not gonna make it. Unfortunately, I passed, and uh, unfortunately, I got an exemption actually in one of the subjects, which I just don't know why because it made things difficult for me to quit CA now because my dad was like, uh, so why don't we just do it? And uh, I went to Australia for three weeks where the entire coffee and my passion basically got back. All right. In May, I went to Australia. This is 2015 I'm talking about. And I saw the coffee culture over there, what it is. It is not just a coffee shop. So wherever you go into a field a little deeper, you kind of get to know there is much more to it than just what it looks on the surface. All right. So you guys must have, uh, you've seen Spark It Out and Blacksmiths and all these beverages. They are like the baseline of what we do. There is much more. We've got a backward integration of basically the processing side of things. How we get the coffee cherries, how we work with the farmers. We roast the coffee, we pack the coffee, we curate blends, and we taste the coffee for different cafes in the entire country. Yes, I didn't know back in 2015, but when I saw the coffee culture over there, these are the things that I observed, all right? So there was no, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, I was talking to a friend of mine who's my CA right now, and he told me like, uh, I want a, a business projection from you as to where, where are you heading for the next five years. And I told him, like, I have never ever in my life written down a business projection. This is a tip that you shouldn't take, all right? Uh, but that's that's me because I was not in the college or I did not uh, have the way to uh, write things down properly. But uh, for me, it has always been passion. It has always been instinct and passion to draw your business forward. Coming back to the conversation, he said, like, I want the projections because we need to raise some uh, XYZ amount of funds or whatever. And unfortunately, I did not have. But uh, when he showed me the statistics of the five, past five years, I was really mesmerized. In fact, in fact, I'm going to share it with you one second. So for quarter seven, and why I'm telling you this is, is because this was all possible even without having a financial... Uh, uh, what do you say, uh, business model around it. Because I know those questions are going to come around that what was your model about? There was no business model as such. It was only the passion that was working out. From the first year, we've been seeing a growth of 126% year-on-year growth, uh, which is something which was really surprising for me and which was really amazing. From the first day, we've been profitable. Uh, our EBITDA, anybody EBITDA? Oh, thank you, Shark Tank. All right. So we've got a 25 to 45 or 40 person EBITDA approximately. And we are a brand which has not raised any money till now. And we have basically. So we thank you. So we also saw COVID as we discussed right now, right? We also a business seeing COVID 
and surviving and growing is something which is extremely tough. Uh, I don't remember if you were there in the COVID time, or you were not there. but uh, COVID was extremely tough. And in your business fields, if anybody is trying to get into business or anybody is getting into hospitality or whatever, these such situations uh, can't be faced without you being super confident about what you're doing. All right. Uh, what helped was not a uh, not a CA background, but what helped was my passion. All right. Had I just focused on one thing as to I want to make. 125% year on year growth, it wouldn't have worked at all. So, I asked you to remind me about something. It's passion. Passion is overrated. All right. Why do I say passion is overrated? Anybody? What is that? Sorry. You should actually do what is required at that moment. Than what you than what you like. Both right, but that's I'm I'm talking in a different sense actually. Both are in a way. Yes, yes. Passion has become a cool thing. All right. Passion has become like a super cool thing that uh, I'm passionate about this thing, and uh, I'm struggling in my life. I've got a struggling startup. I've got to do something like this. I want to go to Shark Tank. That cannot be your be all and end all goal. Is what I'm trying to say. So when I started, when I started, uh, I did not know that uh, this passion is going to be uh, how much do I need to make X Y Z amount. All right. So whenever you guys will be starting off, there will be a question of how much money do I need and how much returns do I want and all. My really raw advice is don't even care about it for the first two years. Don't even care about it. If you genuinely like it, just do it. But don't go with the wave of what's happening around that. I want to be an quote unquote entrepreneur, right? Everybody over here is entrepreneur in itself. But you don't need to be uh, doing something just for the sake of it, right? This I learned very hard way because I was pursuing my CA as I said earlier, and I was not enjoying it at all. Uh, and I still try to get. Uh, something cool out of it. So I had started, started a company called uh, Nimito, all right, which was basically there were three partners uh, and it was their initials. Ni was for Dinad, Ni for Mithilesh, To for Tom, who was not even in the business. He was sitting in Australia, my plan was to partner and I was going business law and all that nonsense. I got into that way. I was like, okay, so uh, what did the company do was, uh, I think we used to do management information system. And who are we? Nobody. We didn't know anything about it. So I was trying to be cool over there. I was trying to find my passion forcefully over there. Did it work out? Clearly not. All right. So try to gauge that how far can you go with the passion. It is extremely overrated at times. All right. But you need to understand that uh, the passion, now your point comes in, that your passion should also be uh, fulfilling your paycheck. All right. Uh, I'm not going to talk about, uh, I said, I'm not going to talk about what struggles and all those hardships and all those, all those things because everybody faces that. Even today, you have to uh, submit an assignment, so you're also facing a hardship, I'm sure. But uh, what I'm going to talk more about is what this coffee industry is all about. All right. Uh, let's forget for a while that Corridor 7 uh, Coffee Roasters is a coffee shop. Let's just forget that, all right? So we're not a coffee shop. So what do we do? Uh, the introduction that I was given about the Q grading, about the Aeropress Championship, about the Barista Championship, what all that exactly is. So let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, I got into coffee 2015, as I said, but... Uh, when I used to travel for my tournaments in badminton, I used to drink coffee everywhere. So since 2002, 2003, I am that old, yes. Uh, since 2002, 2003, I used to drink a lot of coffees. And I used to get coffees from a lot of countries and everything. But I did not really know how to make a career out of it or how to make a paycheck out of it. Come in 2015, I traveled to Australia, as I said. 
And over there, I remember one day I uh, saw a person who was just standing. Uh, actually, I won't call him right now. So he was just standing, all right, and uh, he was basically tasting some coffee. All right, he was tasting some coffee and. So he was tasting some coffee and uh, I was a shy kid over there. I did not do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So back in 2015, uh, I was a shy kid who went to Australia to just see what the coffee market is all about. Actually, I'd gone to have a senior tire. It was a Tothana company, Nimitoga. So I had gone for that, but my sister suggested, why don't we why don't you just do a coffee course? So I did that. And I remember this one particular cafe where this guy was standing over there and he was just tasting coffees. He was just tasting coffee and making some notes, right? And uh, I ended up asking him, like, what are you exactly doing? So this guy said that I am a coffee cover. That was the first time I ever understood or heard this, know about this word. Coffee cover basically is a guy or a girl who basically tastes the coffee, scores the coffee. Coffee is scored basically. This guy is getting bored because he's heard it a lot of times. Um, so he scores the coffee and there's a proper tasting sheet that gets made. This tasting score is valid in the London and New York Stock Exchange, where basically that determines the prices of the coffee. Right? So from 2015, where I first time see a coffee cover, to 2017, where I become that person myself, it was a transition of two years where I was tasting around 20, 30 coffees every single day. All right. When the examination was there, the tube reading examination, uh, it is done under a red lit room. All right, photographic room, they can sometimes how photographs are developed and all. So it's kind of that room. The reason of that room is because they don't want you to see the visuals of coffee, but let's not go into depth of it. In those six days that I had to give the exam, I ended up tasting over 800 cups of coffees, and I basically scored all 800 coffee. I had to score it. And my scoring and my basically instructor scoring has to be the same. All right. So there are 14 people over there. So you basically, it's not a course, it's an examination. Q grading happened. I became a Q grader. That is what one of the part of my introduction is. Now, Aeropress Championship, coffee is now becoming more of a championship kind of thing, an Olympic sport, if I want to put it. All right. So there are a lot of championships in coffee. The reason I'm telling you guys all this is. Because I want you guys to forget that Corridor 7 is a coffee shop. There is much more to what we do. I just want you guys to understand what I'm trying to say. I mean, what we are trying to do. So, championship in coffee. Um, anybody heard of it? You heard of it? Which championship have you heard? Like? Sorry? You just heard about it. Anybody else? Championship? So there are a lot of championships in coffee where basically uh, there are various parameters on which you are judged and all. Uh, so in 2017, for the first time ever, there was a coffee championship in India. And I took part of it and I won that and we presented India the World Coffee Championship. Similar thing happened last year also. In 2022, there was a World uh, Indian Barista Championship, which I basically participated and I represented India the World Championship. So these are all the credential schools, but what do you do of it? How do you make money of it? Because it is somewhere or the other important. <coughs> so coffee now is getting so diverse and vast that right now we are opening, we're coming up with coffee training centers, not just in Nagpur, but also the plans are for Delhi and Hyderabad and Bangalore. Where basically people from different cafes, different coffee shops will come down and they'll get trained over here. And I understand a lot of people must be saying, like, yeah, pani to dalna and banana and 
all those things. But trust me, there's much more. There's much, much more science towards it. So training we are getting into, we are opening roasted coffee business in different parts of the country also. So Corridor 7 started as a roastery where we basically procure the coffee beans directly from the farmers. Where I personally go to the, pass, uh, to the estates to see what kind of green beans or processing they are doing, what kind of work are they up to, and then we select those coffees and get it over here, roast it, and then ship it to different cafes in India and abroad. So that we are expanding our arm is getting expanded in Bangalore and Hyderabad. So this is what we can frankly do. Um, Apart from that, we also have a cafe as everybody. Now we can come back to the cafe thing that where we have the blacksmiths and black tapes and spark it up. So these are all beverages which are basically patent pending in a way. So some of the beverages that we have created are patent pending and uh, you won't get it on the market as such because these are not recipes which are like just downloaded at that. Anyway, so this is a little bit about what the coffee industry is up to or what Corridor 7 is up to. Personally speaking, if I want to tell you like what uh, you would see in the coffee industry in the next three to four years, we would want more people from the business management background getting into the industry so that things are streamlined in a better way. Right now, yes, it is a passion-driven industry for sure. But then once the passion is clubbed with the proper streamlining of business, it will only make a impact that is so big that people from Australia or Japan or US would start looking at India as a more focused coffee industry. Coffee culture in India is not much, if you want to put it that way, right? Chai cultures are there. But anybody who has visited US or Canada or Australia or anywhere, you would definitely see coffee being like a compulsory kind of a beverage every single day. In India, it's not. It's not right now. In the next three, four years, we would be there, right? So, we would want more students coming down, more college people, more people from MBA background coming up, or other. Uh, in fact, I'll tell you one more thing. There are now championships in coffee, uh, which has uh, art in it. All right. So, designers are involved in that. People who are graphic designers, people who are into art side of things, they are getting clubbed into the coffee industry. And there are championships and world recognition. So there are a few people who have literally opened their entire business by taking cafe as the base, but they are interior designers and now they've got the entire firm and they are traveling and there are a lot of people who are being hired by them. So that's what the coffee industry is. It is not something which is secluded. It is not something which is really small or just does a coffee or a breakfast or a brunch kind of thing. We have got a mass uh, opening in the entire industry, right? So that was a little bit about what I do. I would like to right now just throw it open to everybody who wants to ask any question or anything that you want to talk about. No questions. Yes, please. Oh, sir, so, please. So, sir, whenever a person is trying to figure out what they want to do, and uh, as such, your passion in coffee uh, is an unconventional idea, basically. And uh, having a short, short job that you had in hand, that is, you were actually pursuing PA, and uh, you thought of you know, letting it go and starting something uh, really unconventional. Yeah. What exactly came to your mind at that time, and what motivated you? And uh, what do you think? Uh, what Basically, what did you think at that point of time when you were in that place? Do you want to know a funny answer or a two answer? Or both? Or both. <laughs> so, funny answer being, yeah, kuch aata nahi to coffee karo. To kuch to ho jai. All right. But when, you, when the truth is that the calling was so strong that that time I did not even understand or I don't even remember thinking twice about what would people say. What would happen? Uh, where is the next money coming from? Because uh, I'll tell you, like, I remember I had, say, 2400 bucks remaining in my account back in 2015. That's it. So I was not worried because I loved it so much. 
you know at times yes i understand at times there are situations where you will be so much answerable to not just your parents or your partner or your society or something like that that you may not be able to look beyond right there will be a situation i have seen my mom facing that because i remember when she got those tupperware ke boxes back in 1999 ghar pe so i remember me and my uh, dad were looking at those plastic boxes like kya hai what are they but she did not care so all the sounds or all the talks were just sounds that probably you don't really know and at that time you yourself need to basically dig deeper into the industry whatever industry it is it could be the button industry for all you know like somebody is manufacturing this it could be your passion to manufacture this button all right but just by saying that is not enough if i would have said ki okay mere ko coffee mein kuch karna hai and if i don't dig deeper that's not going to be enough so you have to go all the way in all out in uh my travel to australia was kind of the second time when i traveled was for that to find out exactly what it takes what are the industry standards because there is no particular education is such we were discussing about that coffee is an 8 and 12 to 12 to first year for it's not something in that so you have to basically go all the way right you have to find out what this industry does what you have to go ahead with that's how you have to do it there is no fallback option you cannot have a plan i hope it answers the question if not please 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 yes 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 okay so tell me have you ever heard about uh, tea addict yes yes सॉरी या दैट्स राइट आई सेड सो टी एडिक्शन बट हमने ये कभी सोचा नहीं कि टी से कुछ खराब होगा नहीं होगा सो कैफीन को बेसिकली थोड़ा ज्यादा बर्बाद किया हुआ है आई इट्स कैन ऑफ पुट इन अ वेरी नेगेटिव सेट ऑफ थिंग्स विथड्रॉल सिंड्रोम पे वी कम बैक सो बेसिकली माय एंटायर रूल और फिलॉसफी इज यू हैव वन कप ऑफ कॉफी यू ड्रिंक वन ग्लास ऑफ वाटर दिस इज अ कपल ऑफ विद दैट आई यूज्ड टू ड्रिंक अराउंड एट मग्स ऑफ कॉफीज during my ca all right those big marks the funny thing is that i used to make the worst coffee and i used to cover it <laughs> once i got into specialty coffee then eight ka shayad kabhi kabhi 30 ho jata hai tasting ke liye uh, but withdrawal symptoms hote hain yes there are times withdrawal symptoms where if you don't drink coffee for that chai also so everything would have it me as person who's tasting the coffee of course i have to drink it i can't stay without it so it is so no 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 i stay away from that absolutely i stay away from the health benefits i stay away from all the medical science of coffee uh whatever information that i can share next has been given by a doctor to me so uh the doctors association one of the arms uh one of, so they told that they start their presentation with benefits of coffee so he was like you can surely use this and tell everybody that doctors use it as a uh, slide to start up their show so uh, you need not to worry about before that question comes in green bean hot water green bean jo rehta na like people say fat loss ke liye and all that anybody heard about that green bean fat loss yeah Yeah, green coffee, green coffee. That's all. This, this point is okay. Is it what is chicory? Oh, chicory. Okay, we come to that. We come to that. So, so green coffee, jo hai na, boil wala. That's all a myth. Don't waste your money on that. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. So, and it tastes extremely bad. You can try it. You can try it. It tastes extremely bad. uh chicory okay so chicory is basically uh it doesn't come under the specialty coffee category so there is a commercial side of coffee the specialty side of coffee uh i will allow to talk about beers over here 
Okay, cool. So, do we get beers on the campus? No. No. Ah. Okay. Okay. So, like in beer, also this craft brewery, and then there are these commercial beers, right? So, in coffee, also there's specialty coffee and commercial coffee. So, chicory is basically a root of a plant, right? Of a plant called chicory itself, which basically once uh, roasted and ground and added to coffee. It becomes uh, the prices go low. The coffee becomes bolder. So, our so South Indian coffee, jo hai na, I I love it. I love it. Yeah, filter coffee. South Indian. So, my filter coffee is still used for the afternoon because in specialty coffee there is espresso in this filter, but it does not mean the South Indian filter. It has some different. So that's why. So, but have a filter coffee, jo, wo ka hai. So 70, 30, 80, 20, 90, 10. When you see, when you hear 70 is the roasted coffee, 30 or 20 or 10, whatever it is, is the chicken. So, what would you prefer? 100% coffee or like 70 or 60? 100% coffee. I have to. So, over here. Oh yeah. So my question is that uh, do you still I mean do you believe fear was a factor in the thing in a way that things have played out for you? Like the fear of not doing something or the fear of that you like, what if I lose everything that happened, you know? So uh, I mean that, that what exactly do you do to deal with the fear? So there was fear for sure, but definitely not fear of missing out. All right, that we spoke about. It was not nothing to do with FOMO, all right. Uh, so fear of uh, not achieving, fear of not living up to what I want, for sure. Even today, I have, of course. So a lot of people think that Corona has become big or small or whatever. A lot of people have till now not heard about Corona, right? So we've not achieved. So even today, I've got. I'll answer this in a different way. So uh, a lot of people, as I said, like think that Corona is big now. Those things. Now, the other day, around a month back, uh, one of the family members of Haldiram, who doesn't know Haldiram? Exactly, all right. So, a <laughs> family member at Corridor, and we started talking, and he was like, So, many of you shark tank a joke, Mara was super in front of him. When I got introduced to him, uh, I said, like, uh, Oh, so you are the people who go to shark tank and buy the shark tank. Right, so that was a joke. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is that he that time said that uh, hum log abhi hum log soch rahe expansion ka. And I was like, abhi expansion ka soch rahe hai, abhi tak kya <laughs> Because back in 2006, Singapore airports mein Haldiram was there. 2007, 8, America had Haldiram. So now where are they planning to go? Right, so that fear of not doing or not achieving or not giving your best or uh, what do you say? Fear of uh, a lot of things, lot of things. And I tell you one more thing: fear of money will be the last thing. thing. Dur, somewhere in the corner it will be. Right, the fear of other things is a big motivation factor. But one more thing. Uh, I don't remember 2018, the year 2018, I just don't remember because the fear was so much that I did not enjoy it. I just did not enjoy that. But if you ask me about a few dates, I remember a lot of dates, 2018 is blank for me. So my tip would be like, uh, make sure that fear doesn't take you over. It has to be properly channelized and uh, be a motivational tool rather than you succumbing to it. So it is there. So there's somebody asking a question. Yes. So how I have the same graphic. Yeah. Yeah, so my question was uh, and how have you built a network of support and guidance in the transformation of Wow. This is again the topic you were Good question. So he's asking about uh, how did I build a support network in a industry way which is not really new or which is not really old or 
where basically you're trying to find out what is to be done, right? So again, in 2015, there was no article, there was no uh, nobody in India actually to guide through ki coffee mein karna kya chahi. Okay. It was all my God. Thinking about that gives me goosebumps right now because there was so lack of knowledge over there that time. So I decided to go to Melbourne for the Nimito thing. But then when I met the cafe owners and roasters and everything, I decided on that day to go all in. So I started asking questions. Uh, so discomforting for the person in front of me that I have still not again done that. You know, like I have asked that taste of taste karana coffee. I have asked him how much do you make per hour? I am I'm not that person. I am just not that person. But I needed to know. My intention was not to see how much tax he pays, but to really know how much does this job make? What is it entailing to? So basically, I think it is about going a little ahead and asking the right question in the right way. Ask. Just ask. You know, just ask about whatever you need. And right now, the world has become so small. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all these things are like super available. Of course, what time baby tha, but coffee industry me kisko mundo? Who do I ask? So I started writing Instagram messages, DMs, and all those things. I started getting some responses. From there to existing, so what I was coming from was a specialty coffee background. What was happening in India was a little more towards a commercial side of things, more streamlined coming. For them to ask these questions. They were kind of feeling very odd because they used to talk in a very different manner. They used to be like, okay, airport pay saw machines. Very random example. Airport pay saw machines here. But I am talking to them about I need one good machine. They did not understand. So there was basically you have to knock on a lot of doors. And if a lot of a lot of people will discuss, oh, I'll give you one tip on this. Uh, not all advices are good. I'm sure you know that. But at the same time, not adv- all advices can be wrong also. It's a very thin line for you to understand. My wife right now, she wanted to get into a uh, uh, business of linen and uh, not clothing, but linen. She comes from a city called Panipat, which is like uh, three bags of Panipat. <laughs> so Panipat is a place which is like uh, Asia's biggest hub for textile. Alright, so she wanted to get into it, and uh, I told her one thing: like, don't go to these big manufacturers. The information that they will give you will overwhelm. The same thing I did. I did not go to these big companies where you know, for them it is like a day-to-day activity. If they tell you that okay, we take like hundred tons of coffee or two thousand tons of coffee, and if I sit down with a piece of paper and write it down, thousand tons multiplied by five hundred rupees per kg. I'll be like, where do I start from? Same thing I told her, told her, but she went and spoke to somebody uh, in the industry and she came back and she was super overwhelmed. She was like, I don't know how to do it. Like, how do I basically start this? It will need this machinery, it will need 100 people, it will need 200 uh, acres of land. So, what I'm trying to say is that there is always a scope of one more person in the industry or a one more angle in the industry, right? If other big commercial coffee shops are there, we still can be existing over there, just do it differently in the right way. So when there was no network and all, this is the thinking that you have to take through. If you have to tell it, it will be I'll share one more example. Uh, in Nagpur, it was very difficult to find partners or vendor, vendor partners. As basic as, as basic as a paper cup, I was just mentioning that, as basic as a paper cup, the way I want it. Because locally, everybody was like, I want to make a These guys were like, I don't want to make a party. The first answer is, I don't want to make So, what do I believe? No, right? So, that is how basically you keep asking. And there's a lot of network, a lot of people who open this book. Just have to ask the question. Okay, any question, please? Yes. 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 
So two different angles, like uh, made it and something beautiful. Okay, two no different things. So uh, I'll share one. So the team actually motivates me immense. The kind of team we've got. Uh, there's one team member that I would love to mention. He's about. I mean, that is, he's also a team member for sure. But uh, one team member I would love to mention. He's uh, this guy called Sohan, right? So this guy, uh, God, it it chokes me up a lot. So <clears throat> this guy, just as I'm called to join, करने वाला था. And okay, remember, C seven or card seven or cafes or whatever is a hospitality business. You got to be presentable. You got to be talking nice. You got to be uh, well dressed. All those notions and all that. All right. Before he joined Cardo, three years before that, he couldn't speak. He he couldn't speak. All right. Plus, he had a limp on in his left leg. He has a limp in his left leg. His surgery scheduled on the ninth February. And uh, imagine somebody who's here like this in a hotel or whatever. A lot of people have rejected him, right? My biggest when I thought that okay, we have made it is when all the guests who were are there. Nobody made fun of him. Nobody really uh, judged the company or judged him. In fact, Sohan was one of the is one of the most Known people in the camp, right? So that is a time when I thought that okay, the culture because कैसा था? जब हम seventy में जब बर्डर शुरू होने का था, उसके पहले ऐसा था कि the brewer or barista, barista is not the brand I'm talking about, the person who makes coffee for you is the guy, the brewer or barista. So uh, they were not really looked upon as it. It was like big capital. And then a very basic small thing. Usually that used to happen. All right, there was not much respect towards that side of it. The entire point was that we wanted our brewers to be the leaders or the main people in the cafe who can establish relation with them. Right, that way. And that is a moment when I realized that okay, when Sohan is over here and people want to talk to Sohan, we have made it. We brought that culture a step higher. So that was really really good. So yeah, I mean uh, that is when I always, when I look at the team, I always think that wow, we made it incredibly good. Uh, we made it really beautiful. We made it good. Kabhi nahi aaya sir. You never ever kind of. At least I am never kind of satisfied. Sorry, somebody will ask me. So yeah. Anyway, any more? What's your question? Yes. Ah, please Say passion is not important. I said passion is overrated. You need to channelize it. Okay, that's what I want to say. That passion is important, but it is overrated. But it has to be channelized well. Okay, but I get what you are asking. Like the amount of information that you kind of get. Even passion gets confused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, it does get confused, man. Like 
चाहिए क्या ये चाहिए वो चाहिए दैट वे हाउ डू सॉल्व दैट प्रॉब्लम आई थिंक विद द ओवरलोड ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन दीज डे इज राइट ना एंड कैंड ऑफ लाइक इवन टूडे समटाइम्स वेन so what do you choose <laughs> so uh okay let me tell you how it worked for me okay of course there is a lot of information all those things are uh how it worked for me was that strong super gut feeling you know when was the last time you had a super strong gut feeling ki ye change karna hai ya yahi hai mere liye or whatever yeah whatever you know like there is a calling that comes which is super super strong which i can't really describe it's not in the books and i am sure everybody has experienced that but sometimes you kind of feel ki nahi yaar ye galat ho jayega kyunki abba nahi manenge you know that kind of a thing <laughs> that kind of a situation happens right but that is a time where if you kind of are convinced you don't have to convince anybody else i think that's the simplest of the answers yet so difficult right if i want to do mba like i plan to do mba in 2025 i genuinely plan to make up for the admission nahi diya but i have planned to do that and lot of people do say that uh, why do you want to do i'm not going to listen to them right i want to do what i want to do your question is little more ki what i want to do right same thing other people to people exactly so uh, also what happens pata hai uh, sometimes people are not judging you hum hi baith ke soch rahe hain yaar judge kar rahe hain ye mere ko judge kar so it is called assumption assume you know i had uh, come across this very funny not a funny but a real thing also what does assume mean it is as you and me you mean you as out of yourself don't assume don't assume when i went to my dad's room that day when i said i i had assumed ki wo mere ko bolenge ca kar but mai jab gaya unke room mein and i told them that okay i don't want to do ca the only question he asked ki ca nahi to coffee mein kya karna hai abhi mere liye usko kuch answer hi nahi tha so my thing would be like i don't think so you need to care about what people are thinking anybody for my my uh, i recently read this like uh, if what your parents or the people who are not happy with you for taking up a decision will keep quiet once you start showing the paycheck you know something like that it is pretty normal so i have a question so uh, you know like uh, yes so are you know about the fact that how complex part of culture is western countries and i totally agree to it uh, i was in kolkata and i saw a brand called bread Oh, Bread Tips Coffee is subscription people for twenty pounds and get a nice coffee for a month. Yes, and the Bread is also uh, you know uh, going to start their operations in India. So how does C seven uh, you know or uh, how prepared is C seven in order to face competitions from brands like uh, Starbucks and Bread? And you know are you guys also going to give a coffee subscription? Coffee becomes a part of Indian culture and fiber of India. So. second part of the question and answer first coffee subscription yes we will be starting off the first part of the question when you say that a competition and answer in two things one is we've got a population of 1.4 billion and as i said earlier there's always a space for one more second my competition is with my brand so my quarter seven opens up in nagpur versus metro so that's about it that's about it because I know one thing that I can't make another product. I myself can't make another product, and I'm not being very snobbish or anything about it. Nobody can build one more Starbucks. Nobody can do that. Nobody can do so. Tell me this thing. You answer me this thing. Like tomorrow, if there are like five hundred Starbucks in Nagpur, right? Five hundred of them. Would you go three sixty five days to Starbucks? That's about it. That's about it. There's always a space for one more. You just have to focus and stick to your thing. What you want to represent. and not be affected by the competitions not be affected then how this is seven is it 
Okay, so basically, uh, my so the name Corridor Seven. Uh, my first memory of coffee is from my school corridors, where coffee used to be brewed for my teachers, and that was on the sixth floor uh, and top floor. And we never were allowed to be there because of the chemistry lab. I know. So me and a friend of mine used to sneak up and used to go there just to smell the aroma, right? Seven is because uh, uh, back in the 16th century, there was a Sufi saint called Brother Baba Madan. He smuggled seven green beans from the Middle East, planted those in Chik Mangalore near Bangalore in India, and that is how coffee started growing. So it's a combination of my first memory and how India started growing coffee. That's why it called it out itself. What do you say? C7 is it like Cristiano Ronaldo? As a <laughs> you might will see that Cordero has never used a Buick 7. He only used Cordero 7 times. That's the good thing. Yeah, I would like to know something about Kobe beans. Uh, so in India, where do you find best Kobe beans? Uh, so okay. Where, 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 which part of the country you from? I'm from Meghalaya. Meghalaya? Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. It's a beautiful place, Garo Hills. Yeah, I'm Garo. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, we had a coffee. This might interest you a lot. So, first of all, we get coffee majorly from Chikmamuru, Bangalore, Kirk, uh, Kerala. Kerala. We get it from there. Uh, also, there are some parts in Maharashtra which grow, but not that many to be very honest because the altitude zone is not there. But back in 2016, 19, what happened was we got samples from uh, Meghalaya. There's this person called Mr. Shantanu Roy. If you go there, please say hello, hello from my side. So he sent us samples of around, around 30 coffees, I guess. All processed in a different way, and we kept it on the side because we had our entire thing going on, roasting on. We got that, we started roasting that after three months that we got. We tasted that they were phenomenal. They were phenomenal. Or well, not all, some were having processing issues, but Meghalaya also grows some good coffee. So it's Meghalaya, Chikmagalur, Kur, Kerala, all these places. And also, India is one of the largest coffee exporters in the world. Largest. The thing that used to happen was, even it happens now, that we trade coffee with timber from XYZ country. So from that country, they say that we want uh, thousand tons or thousand uh, containers of coffee, and what we do is we just mix it up and we just send it. So we don't know the potential of coffee. So we're trying to break that barrier now. We know. Like <coughs> what? Sorry, what we are trying to do is the customer should get to know which coffee are they drinking and where is it from? Who's the producer? So that's the line that we are working on. Hmm. There are a lot. Robusta and Arabica would be like uh, 85 percent of the entire world uh, coffee. Then you've got Liberica. You got a lot of these, a lot of these. But Arabica is more quote unquote flavorful. Robusta has got more caffeine content in that. So it's kind of more jittery. Yes. Please. If you want stability and security, same as any, that is what I work. Can you repeat those four words? Stability, security, growth, growth opportunity, use of ideas, new opportunity, and how do you use it, uh, use it in your growth plan? I am that guy who would not have a plan. So for me, I was telling again, I was telling my CEO about this the other day that. 
I'm a person if I get to know how much I'm making the next one or the next two or six months, I will never start working. I am not motivated. I don't want to, and I'm not talking about more or less. I'm talking about I just don't want to know number, I want to start working. So it's a very different mindset. For me, I don't like for a matter of he knows how I function. If we are doing something which is regular, same thing, we can't do it twice for price. We don't want we want to take risks. So at least at least the stage I am at right now, uh, I would not want those two words to be together. I would go for a risk. How? I'm the worst person to take it. Yes, what is the most major challenge which you faced while arranging for the seed capital for a venture? Okay. So we are yet to raise that. It was all my stocks and everything that I invested in that was brought to the company for which I took that. But next round or seed finance, right now we are working on it. Uh, but as much as I'm seeing, I think. As I said, like raising money is not a problem at all. And I'm not saying this because we have good sales, we've got good year on year or all those things. But that is a last thing. There are so many people with so much money. They will give it to you. But the challenge I faced is I want the right kind of person. That's what my thinking is. I want the right kind of strategic investment partner with this who can open better doors, better markets, or contribute in a better way, in the way the corridor, in the way corridor seven functions. So that is my biggest, uh, what do you say, challenge. Right now, it's still in the proprietary stage. It is. It is. Yeah, it is. We haven't raised any money yet. Touch wood, self sustainable so far. So. Yes, I. Yes, I. Well, first you tell what is the answer. Flip the coin and then what happens. <laughs> so you open a live frame for today. Ah, yeah. So frame is a new one. Yeah. So I know for a fact that you have a strong product. So what exactly did you do for and do a finish on the entire one? Great. Let me first address what Brim is. Brim is another brand that we have come up with, which is a small shop, QSR. QSR is a go for uh, quick service restaurant. Yeah. So it's that, and we want to keep this as a fast flowing, fast flying brand. Now, uh, I'll come back to your question, but I'll ask you a question first. What do you make of Brim? What do you think Brim is? Not the acronym or not all those things, but when you deal with the brand, uh, what do you think? Is it is it called the or is it? I what I'm trying to go for today. What do you make of it? I see it as much more something that is much more experimental okay. and fast pace. Yeah. Okay, great. So in many ways, that is what we were wanting for. What is happening is that Corridor 7 is more into the experiential and or uh, educative side of things, but BRIM is something that we just wanted some cost over there where we can do good coffee for sure, no compromise with that, but in a quicker, faster moment. So, we want to divert all the takeaways over there. Somehow, it's not still happening. Somehow, it's still not happening because the place is in. But we are looking now, right now, we are looking at a very tiny market. Right now. That's the if you look at like uh, Google or Chopper View, and if you look at email map and see where Brim has to be there, I would place Brim uh, at um, offices and colleges, at colleges and offices, at uh, uh, places where you know the prices are pretty friendly. And, uh, we ask them to do it. But I can't do that with Google. I don't want to do that. With. So it's a, they are two, two different brands. Yes, please. Sir, do you feel like books or kind of for a particular author that you are learning to motivate you basically? Okay, so two questions. 
So one is to answer the first one. I read like two four books at the same time. For me, as I said, like I don't, I'm, I can't do the same. I can't read a book at stretch. Right? I read like ten pages of this and move to ten pages of other one. Right now, I think somebody gifted me uh, the book of Shivaji Maharaj. Right? Oh my God! Gotta read that for sure. Uh, that is good. What book helped you? Uh, oh wow! I think I'm reading. Has anybody read the book called Power of Now? Power of Now. Anybody who's read? I read for five ten minutes. Right? Yes, yeah. that's right. That's right. That is one book that. How, how did you find it? I almost forgot. I okay. I could not finish it somehow. It is super heavy. It's extremely heavy. Like for me, it was like I used to read one page in a day, uh, and then I'm like, whoa, this is like super heavy. Then see, you know. So that is one book, Power of Now, and I gift it to a lot of people. That is one book I love. The story of Eckhart Tolle. Uh, Eckhart Tolle. Yeah. So of that guy who written it, he's that he was in depression for like good three years. This is the one bench, and then uh, from there you go to book. So your book is basically dividing your thoughts. That helped me a lot. Definitely. Not a psychological session, but that book is good. Definitely, please. Don't buy a, buy a, please buy a book. Because it will be. There's any questions for God? Yes, please. I We know that uh, you played your part in establishing the copy culture. So, like, uh, what are the basic principles or rule of thumb uh, you'd like to give out for someone who is trying to establish a new business culture in a conservative country like India? Okay. So, uh, great question. I mean, first of all, you got to be, you know, like how I took Colorado Seven as. Was has anybody been to these thali places? Yeah, Manmar or that one? What is that? Shadi or something? Huh? No, no, no. Manmar or that? Like what is it called? Like no, 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 no. Like in Marwadi culture, it is there. Manmar, karna, right? Yeah, yeah. What is it? That what is that called? The Shadi or birthday? So what is that? I am coming to your answer. I am coming to your answer. There is something. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is basically, Rajdhani Thani Thani is there. Yeah. Bahaan pe, the way they force you to eat. Alright? You gotta be that person. You gotta be that person. What I'm trying to say is that when Cordero started, black coffee pina was like it's bitter. Okay? We wanted to break that stigma. We wanted to break that. So what we started doing was anybody who walked in, anybody who walked in. No matter what age, where is he or she coming from, no matter nothing else. What we started doing was we just started giving black coffee to the people and said that you know what, we are drinking some coffee by the camera. So from there we saw everybody getting a coffee culture. A person, and it is as simple as that, it's just very secret formula name. Many as much market research here or I think you just have to be a person who will. Super, super excited for somebody else to try it out. Which concept are you having in your mind? If you don't mind sharing. Not right now, but maybe. Okay, so let's say a uh, culture of uh, sushi. Hey, tough here. But let's say a culture of sushi. If I was that person, <clears throat> I would first of all educate myself in that sushi. Because that is the biggest powerful marketing tool you can ever have. All right? The more you educate yourself in that field, nothing or nobody can beat you. Second, what I would do is I would start a sushi small space. Never, I am against having a big bam open. All right? Like uh, you open like a store which is like massive and like from the first day you are doing marketing. So start when you are building a community. 
you want the other person to feel that they are a part of a community. They are not there for a transaction. In corridor, we believe that it is conversation over transaction. If you if you say that okay, here's your money, and oh, we don't like that. We want you to talk to us. So coming back to the sushi example, if I was a person who's bringing a sushi culture, I would set up in the main space where and I was just start letting people know, you know what, why didn't come now? It's on me, just come. And I start delivering that sushi and start giving that food. That is how you basically build your culture. And you may find this to be very basic, you know, but make up the Most of the people don't do it. If I want to start a fabric company in Nakhto, let's say, what I would do is I'll start in a small educated way, I'll educate myself in that. I'll keep a small store and I'll start telling people, hey, you know what, this is how you can use the instead of the The more you give information about the product, the more people will start trusting you. And you will get information only if you are educated enough in that product. So that is what is my suggestion that we do. To build a culture, to build a community, you have to have to have to push yourself towards that, do it day in and day out, or you have to listen to what you no questions, please. Sorry, sorry. Oh my God. Get instant coffee. Like, selling the instant coffee and freshly roasted coffee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, are they portable? They're portable machines? No, so you know what? Like, it's as simple as you could have chai is a Just do it like that. Forget everything what is not to be done. Just make it like that. Like the tea? No, the ground part. So, we can grind the coffee to give it to you. Those ground so the difference between instant and a freshly roasted coffee uh -huh. is that instant coffee will get dissolved in water, freshly roasted coffee will not get dissolved. There will be some residue like type. Uh -huh. So you start making it like tea, you brew it like tea, and then you basically add milk over. So just do everything like milk, it's not complicated. Uh -huh. To start off with, it's not complicated. For your coffee, but we require two milliliters for that. I think that's not practical. Huh, so you basically can use muslin cloth also. Let's have some few more questions. Ask a couple of them also. Okay, uh, let me ask you a question. Please. Yes. Uh, candidates mostly face. Where do you want to see yourself in coming candidates? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're asking me where I start myself? It's uh, as a company, as a company. Okay, so my plans recently, my vision recently kind of got altered, not altered, but improvised. I don't like the word altered, it's improvised always. Uh, I definitely want to be a listed company. So that is my goal. No, no, we are not yet there. No, we are not yet there. No, for us. Yeah, yeah. So listed, listed company, uh, uh, but a company which basically uh, is not growing exponentially in just numbers like Pajas Cafe, Saw Cafe, Charso Cafe, because that is an easier way to get it. But a company which basically focuses more on the quality from the processing angle, the roasting angle to championships. Super important, representing India, winning for India. That is what I'm looking at. And 10 years, I'd say 10 years, uh, time shall be is what I feel, you know. So, is that a question you were asking? Okay. But apart from that, my uh, other non coffee is that I want to develop my farmhouse, I want to have like 100 dogs around over there, <laughs> and uh, cook my own meal, grow my own vegetables if it's a possibility. But uh, like yeah, hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars. Yes. Uh, do you want to grow your own food company? Yes. Yeah. But not 
in a lot of conditions which basically can't support copy. But something you will question like is the question is do you want to own an estate somewhere? Yes. So that I can have more control for my bank in terms of quality and just the other right. So check my code and code is no more a holiday place for you. If anybody hasn't been to check my code, my request is yes, yes, yes. You've gone there? Uh, where, where? Okay, nice. Where are you next? Where are you next? Where are you going? Exams for me. Can you go start studying in May first? <laughs> Good. Oh, yeah, yeah. Never thought of it, honestly. Good question. I'll get back to you on this. Like, see, uh, one new is I'm sure not possible because hydroponics usually is for small plants or all. This one is a pretty easy, like a two meter long tall tree. I would like any two more different questions. Some something very really interesting. Please. Yes. Yeah. If you don't know C seven, if you don't know C seven, you don't. Know. <laughs> <laughs> it's your <laughs> last <laughs> time. I haven't never thought of it. But if I wanted to, which one would I have? It's a good thing to year on year. Also, was a wild. Oh, passion brush. Wow, give me a four over set. I'll send it. Maybe you can feel it. Like, give me a four over set. Uh, this thing. I can talk for hours for that, which is a good tip I use. And I think the photo was helpful. Well, African countries like Tanzania, Sri Lanka, they are the fiber is around the world. And the quality of the copy purchased by USC and other countries. That quality is available in India? Because Uganda temperature is always uh, stable, stable. Yes. and every time they have a rainfall or all this. Yes. So it is available in India. See, uh, to, be a, to be very, very honest, we can't really, we are not yet scoring as high as most of you. Because as you rightly pointed out, rains are pretty constant. constant yeah, on this, uh, right. Uganda, yeah. on the king also. On the equator, yeah. and also. Equator. Right, and also they are they have the flat lines. Yes. In India, coffee is grown under uh, trees, under shade. It is not a flat line. So, well, so some uh, good companies like Starbucks, they purchase from there. Correct, correct. So, uh, how you manage that quality? If you want to be in a number uh, one in India, what is India? In 2013 or 14. Again, I'm not saying you may have a such change. I'm just saying that in yeah, yeah. that time, yeah. what was happening was processing was not taken as seriously. People were not really motivated to have better processes. And at the same time, a lot of back in 1950, the varietals that were released in the country, coffee varietals, mm -hmm. coffee seeds, to commerce, was focused more on uh, how much volume or output can be skilled rather than the quality. Because the economic economy was very different. We were not looking at coffee in the back. Because right? we don't have a culture for No, it's not just that. No, no, it's not just that. It's not just about the culture. Because 90% of the coffee, 95% of the coffee gets exported. So it has nothing to do with the culture. Okay, it is only majorly to do with the kind of produce that we require. How much effort are being put? How much education is put to the farmers to say, okay, you have to put XYZ at in April. ABC in March, all those things. So, one thing. I mean, this is a result of it. 
Coffee itself is a language. Coffee itself is a language. Words by Jackie Chan. 
Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dia Agrawal. I am a first year student, and I have been given the responsibility to propose a vote of thanks. I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to everyone who made today's seminar a huge success. A special thank you to our guest speaker, Mr. Pithilesh Vazalwar, for imparting valuable knowledge and insights. Sir, being a coffee lover, your words have touched my heart, and I am sure it's the same for most of you. I would also like to extend my appreciation to our attendees for making the effort to join us today and actively participate in the discussions. I would like to thank the Simply Talk Club and other organizers for their hard work in putting this seminar together. It was an enriching experience for all of us. Learning never stops, so let us keep growing together. Thank you once again and have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you so much. I would love to give you your folder. Definitely, please do. I will explore much of Nagpur yet. I am going to.